I'm Michael Redmond, professional Nine Don Go player. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about the direct 3 3 invasion, and I'm going to keep it simple. Maybe you've had the experience of playing a star point, and your opponent almost immediately jumped into the 3 3 point. And you might have wanted to say, You're not supposed to do that. Because we used to think so. So uh, first I'm going to start with the question, why uh, the direct 3-3 three, three point? And I'm going to define that, uh, the direct 3-3 three, three point invasion, as a an invasion in the 3-3 three, three point with no stones on the sides. So if with just this black stone alone on the star point and no black or white stones within this area. And quite often, the uh, direct 3-3-point three, three invasion is played immediately after the players take the four corners. So it can be played on the fifth or the sixth move now. So with no moves on the sides, we used to think it was bad. But in the year 1917, AlphaGo played 60 games against top human players. And in a few of those games, it played the direct 3-3-point. Three, three also, later that year, in May 1917, there were disclosed some games played uh, by AlphaGo against itself, both in the master version. And in these games, AlphaGo showed us some very convincing examples of how the 3-3 invasion could be very effective. So uh, even professional players were learning from that, and we changed the way we thought about the 3-3 point. So in this video, I will uh, go into some of the variations that we still consider to be valid because some things have changed in the way we think about that. So I'll start with white jumping into the 3-3 three, three point. And when white crawls here, uh, first of all, I should uh, back up one move, say that black usually covers on the side that black wants to, to build. So in this case, black would be trying to build in this direction, hoping for a Moyo uh, territorial framework in that, um, on that side of the board. And this is going to be true of all the variations I show you in this video. I will be making an intermediate video in which that sort of turns around. But uh, for the purpose of this video, when black covers on the right side, black is trying to build towards the side that I've uh, put an arrow on. So. When white crawls, this is when black has to make a choice. Black has about three choices here, in most cases. So first I'm going to show you the simple extension. Now this move is very simple. It's probably the most simple variation, especially in this video in which I'm going to limit it to white's knight's move. When white uh, slides here, this is the most likely move. It's the most played. It's the most natural move, in my opinion. And so I'm going to discuss in this video about black's strategies uh, in this case. And so it is true that black is trying to build in this direction. And so it would be perfectly natural for black to play the next move somewhere on the side. Remember, we're starting with a position where there were no stones on the adjacent sides. So it would be worthwhile for black to play on the side here. But also, there's a possibility that black actually wants to play away when we get into this variation. Because this is a relatively settled shape, and black does have various moves. Black has the move at A, the move at B, and sometimes we'll play this and the hanging connection Black has um, various possibilities to play here and ways to deal with this black group. Very difficult for white to, for instance, attack the wall. So black has a number of options, can play away at this point or can continue with a move to the right side. So now I would like to show you a full board position in which um, this was played. So here we have a game. Uh, white has just played the point that is uh, shown and marked. It's an opening in which black has a moyo towards the lower right area and white has influence towards the upper left area. 
and here black jumped into the 3-3 point. So in this position, first of all, I think white knows that he doesn't want to build in this direction. So for instance, if white, uh, if white covers here, then white does have a low position on the upper side with this stone. And for instance, if white continues with something like this and black plays here, you can see that white is not going to get any big uh, moyo from that wall on the upper left. This seems to be playing in the wrong direction. So I would suggest that white should play here. This was the game move. It seems to make more sense for white to be building territory or at least a framework in this in this direction. So black crawled. White extended. So this is an example of the direct extension here. And in this game, black did play the slide. So actually, I was black in this game. It was my opponent who played this way. This is an example of a position where it's perfectly OK for white to play away. Naturally, it would be a reasonable move locally for white to play something on the left side. In this case, with this white stone reinforcing the side, I think white would be OK playing somewhere around here. So that's a move that could be played. But in this game, it seems to be more important for white to move quickly to the right side of the board. And that was one of the ideas that white had when he played this direct extension to cleanly finish off this variation in the upper left corner and have the option to play away. So white played to the right side and, and this sequence followed. If I make a very uh, commentary for this game, actually, it's a game I played in 2019. I will give you a, a link to it. So this is an example of the direct extension. It obviously is very simple. Um, I will be showing some other variations for it, other options that black has in this case in when black has invaded the 3-3 point, some other options for the player who has invaded the 3-3 point in an intermediate video. And also I will include a link for that up there and, and down in the messages, in the comments. So now I would like to talk about another uh, option that black has, which is to cover on the, on the third line. So black can cover here. And this is a move that was played from the start. Very natural. But now, after this, most of the professional play is limited to a double hane. So the double hane is this move. But first I'd like to talk about this move, which is almost extinct. In this move, white will crawl. And in the modern version of this joseki, white can crawl once more. And we used to have white playing a hane here. In the modern joseki, white does not play that, and actually has ideas to attack black's wall. So while black's wall is pointing in this direction, it's consistent with the idea that black does want to does hope to build a moyo in this area. The fact that we're starting with no, so, no stones on the adjacent sides means that white now has an opportunity to split the right side first. So I'd like to show you a game in which that happened. So here we are with a full board position. Um, you can see it's not that cluttered up with stones and black has just invaded the upper left corner. So in this game, it was a game I played last year. White did extend here and I was the black player. I crawled one more time. And now this is a point where I can play something on the left side. So you can see um, with the previous example, we were talking about the upper right corner and the right side. In this case, the area that white is trying to make territory is going to be this area. So this is the area that we're focusing on here. I could have played the more normal looking move somewhere around here in the middle of the side. This would be perfectly uh, natural. If white plays on this side, I probably want to go to the fourth line. You can see that black is aiming at the peep at A. And that is one of the weaknesses of this wall that white has here, that there is this nice peep at A here that black is looking forward to. Otherwise, if white plays on the, this side, 
it seems a, a rather small extension, a small territory that white's going to get for all of those stones in the wall. And black will be happy to play something on the left side, something like this. And black has a very nice position there. You can see that black, although white made a wall, black is getting territory in the corner and territory on the side. And so black should be happy with this. So this would have been perfectly okay. But um, having seen AlphaGo's games, I wanted to play here. Because in one game, in the 60 game set in which AlphaGo soundly beat top professionals, um, on the internet, there was a game where it played here. And then after that, in the AlphaGo self-played games that were shown later, it played this move. It liked to play this move a lot. And so I had the feeling that this was AlphaGo's favorite move, and I wanted to play it. So this is the move that I played in the actual game. White pincered from the wide side. It seems to make sense. And I peeped here. So this is where I'm going to uh, differ from the game variation where white played here and got into a bit of trouble. I think it's reasonable to expect white to connect here. And black is going to play here. So black is threatening some kind of invasion on the left side. It's pretty certain that white's going to defend on the left side. And for instance, something like this could happen. You can see white is building on the left side, but at the same time, when black plays here, black is getting a very nice shape in the center of the board. And this move has the double value of this attacking white's wall. You can see that line of white stones not really functioning as thickness. It's more, more of a target than anything else. And also there's the fact that white does not have the option to cut here anymore. So if white tries to push through and cut here, this would just be easily captured by black. It would be a disaster for white. So that's not working. If white continues on the left side, then black gets to play here. And white does not have eye space. White would probably continue with something like this. Basically, it's just very painful for white to be trying to, to live in a place like this. And black will have the tempo. Black will have Sente to play something on this side. And you can see black is really taking control here with all black stones on the outside. White playing a lot of moves on the second line just to save the life of his group. It's very painful for white. So that's an example, I think, of how effective this invasion can be. It's a very effective invasion with the following peep here, making a very nice line, a kind of a loose connection between these two stones and putting pressure on the white group as the play continues like this. Especially it's easy to see, I think, when we get to the point where black plays this move. So that was my variation for white extending on the third line. It's not played very much anymore. So we're back to this position. Nowadays, almost always the move that black plays is the double hane here. Now this is a relatively simple move. Black is offering to give white one stone and we'll take the corner in return. So black has digressed, you might say, has moved away from the idea of building a wall and making a territory that will spread out into the center. Black is more interested in taking this corner territory that's going to be about 10 points in the corner here for black. And that was a corner that white was trying to take away from black. So there's significant difference in territory here. And actually it's an even result because white can be satisfied with the shape, the captured shape, it's called a ponuki. This shape here gives one eye to white and having one eye already makes it relatively easy for uh, white to live. Now there is a follow up move for white. White can follow up with this. It's not necessary to play this immediately. Also if, when white plays away, Sometimes black can follow up with a move like this if black is building on the right side of the board. Again, it all depends on what potential black has in this area or even a larger area on the right side. If black does seem to have some good potential, then the knight's move it too it is always going to be a good move. So both players have follow up moves, but since the white group here, let's circle it again, since this white group does have 
one eye here and will re live relatively easily. It's not really necessary for either side to uh, play the follow-up move immediately. So let's take a look at a game in which that was played. So here we have a full board position. This was another game that I played in 2019. And we can see in the upper right corner, Black has chosen this move, the direct extension, which was uh, shown in chapter two of this lesson. And Black used it to play away. So Black has not followed up on the right side. You can see that Black has not bothered to play a move, for instance, somewhere around here and is quickly moving throughout other parts of the board. So at the present, Black has just played that crawl in the upper left corner, and White answered with the Hane and the double Hane. And I think this game sort of highlights the idea that White plays this move in a position where White does not really have much potential with a wall. For instance, with these black stones in the lower left area. These black stones already have a position there. So for instance, if white had played, for instance, this joseki, then black can play something on the left side, for instance, something like this, or maybe a more conservative move like this. It doesn't really matter. This would, again would be the alpha go move, as I think of it, with ideas to peep here next. So I, I sort of like this move. And you can see White's wall is not really amounting to anything yet. It's going to be difficult for White to make good use of this wall. So in a position where White does not have that much potential towards the sides, and in a way you could say that this White group, uh, let's mark the White group here, this White group is in danger of being surrounded by black groups. There's a black group there in the lower right that I've already, the lower left, excuse me, that I've already marked. And there's this black group on the right. Uh, it's possible that white could become isolated there in the corner. This is a case where it's going to be a good idea for white to play the double honey and get a settled position because the one of the characteristics of this choice is that white does have a living shape, a territory in the corner and does not have to worry about these stones. Like they can be left for quite a while until the end of the game. White already has 10 points there. And the only move that white has to be careful about is that if black, for instance, plays here, which is probably not gonna happen in this game, and then plays here, then black does have the threat of an extension on the second line here. So at some point, white's gonna have to deal with that after the liberties of white's outside stones have been filled. Otherwise, black does have um, a forcing move here. So black can play here and play a forcing move here sometimes. So black does have those options. Uh, provided white answers, is no problem for white. So white does not have to add stones to this group, already has a living shape. It's ideal for white in a position where um, white did not really have friendly stones or potential on the sides. And of course, black gets to play away. So I could have played this move. Um, this is kind of aggressive. I'm trying to attack white in the lower left. Also, this move could have been played somewhere on the right half of the board like this, or like, um, or like this, or even like, like this. These kind of moves. Um, game move was, uh, the game move was this, this one. A kind of an aggressive move here. So in this third variation, the fourth chapter of this lesson, I would like to talk about the knight's move. So when black plays here, this is a slight improvement over, over this variation, where black is immediately hunted. And I was telling you that after white plays here, there are going to be a lot of issues with this peep. So to go back a few moves, When black plays the knight's move here, black is aiming for a variation where the peep is not so serious. So in this case, if white plays the same way, then you can see that the peep here is one line further away from white's stone on the side. So if white actually goes for that peep, there's plenty of possibility for black to counterattack. 
because the connection between these two songs is not as good as it was in that other variation that I was showing you here. So the connection between the two black stones, the two white stones, is not so good. And black and counterattack. So this is an improvement. Just to go back a few moves, this is actually a turning point in this joseki. When white plays the hane at four, black has a number of choices. Black can play the extension, which is going to be the main variation for this. And actually the other major choice that black can choose from is to play the hane here. This hane involves a lot of complicated variations. So I'm going to save this for an intermediate video on the 3-3 invasion. So I would suggest that black can play the extension. And I'll talk about the honey in an intermediate video. In this video, I would also like to talk about the option of playing away. So let's, let's see what I'm talking about in a game position. So here we have this position where I actually was playing with the white stones. And it's a position where I could have played the extension, but that would have given black a tempo. It would have been given black sente to play the right side. So black would crow once and then play this move on the right side. And I felt this would make it difficult for me to make good use of my wall because black has taken the best point on the right side. So I felt this was a good place for me to play away. So this game uh, that I played in 2019 is going to demonstrate that I think sometimes it's good for white to be playing away like this. I took the important play on the, on the right side. Locally, a good move for black would be, be to play here. I might play something like this. And although black has a very nice corner territory there, I do have a lot of potential on the right side of the board. In the game, Black actually uh, switched to the left side, also in a big move. And in a few moves, we get to see me play the extension. So this is the, a very natural continuation and sort of demonstrates that even top professionals can play this move if the board position allows it. And with this finished position here, you can see that White has played this large move, the marked large move on the right side and now has this wall to support it. So the whole right area here is becoming, it's becoming a moyo, it's becoming a territorial network. Also, I have the attack against this black stone. So one of these two areas is gonna be developing into a fairly large white territory. So that's how one uses the extension or plays away. I think that in this game we're demonstrating that white can play away too, or later on can play the extension. So it's all about how you feel about the surrounding position. If white already has a position on the right side, as we have here, then it's perfectly okay to play this extension. And again, in this variation that I'm showing here, again it's true that white is trying to build a territorial framework in this direction. So it's this area that White is trying to build on. And that works well with this choice of Joseki. So now I would like to recap and show you the three major variations that I like in this video. First, I showed you the simple extension. This can be very, very simple. It, uh, if White plays a nice move, Black can play away immediately. And we'll have a lot of options later on in the game. The second variation that I liked was the double hane. This is a move that black plays when black is trying to avoid complications and is trying to get a settled shape in the corner. So in this variation, it's almost forced. Black does get the corner territory in a living shape. And the third variation is where black plays the knight's move. And locally it's like this. And I pointed out that this is a point where black has the option of playing away. So those were the three variations that I liked in this video, and they keep it simple. In every case, you can remember that black's strength, black's thickness is pointing in this direction. 
So this area has potential to become Lax Moyo, or potential to become a territorial framework. So thank you for watching the video, and I hope you enjoyed it. So if you did, please don't forget to like, and please subscribe to the channel. Thank you.